What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So we are back today with the final setup on the T-Rex 470 LP to OM conversion. We are going to get the tail in this video and how to set up your tail properly. So we already went ahead, put the head on, that's normal stuff, slide it down, put your bolt in Loctite, you're good to go. We already went ahead and set the boom tension. So now for what I like to do, cause this boom tension can be a pain and there's a lot of people that have had problems with it. So what I personally do, and I found that works great, is I run these two screws. You have one here and you have one right here. So I run those two screws all the way in. Tighten them up, run them in. That's going to give the boom or the belt the most slack in it. So I tighten them all the way up so that way we have the most slack in the belt and push the boom all the way forward. So then once I get these two screws, one on each side, run all the way in, and I have the boom pushed forward, make sure you have this clamp here loose. I will just go ahead, grab the boom with one hand, pull it till I feel a good tightness on the belt, but I feels good, not super tight, and then I'll run, go ahead and lock these four screws down here and then lock the boom clamp down here. So then I can go ahead and fine tune the adjustment of the belt tension with these two screws. So when you turn these screws to the left or would be loosening them, it is actually tightening the belt. So I found, you know, two turns is about all it needs on each one and you get the perfect belt tension. So that's just my little tip on how I have found to tension the belt on the 470. You could just leave these screws, take them out completely, do it the old way, or you just pull the belt back or the boom back till you tension the belt up to you. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about tail rotor setup and the proper way to set up a tail rotor. I see this a lot in proper tail rotor setup, wag, gain, all this good stuff, which we're going to go over today. So I have the boom push rod disconnected right now, tail push rod. Now I have my servo set 90 degrees. So now I set my servo before it ever goes in the helicopter. You set it 90, it is 90 degrees, set it in the helicopter. So now we're going to talk about the tail rotor. Okay, so make sure that, let's fold these blades out for a second. You need the tail blades on for this, or at least it helps. We're going to go over rotor direction. So our blades, our rotor head is going to spin right. It is going to spin clockwise, just like this. So our rotor head's gonna spin clockwise, and while our rotor head spins clockwise, we want our tail rotor to spin counterclockwise. We want the blade, we want it to spin this way. So your leading edge of the blade, your trailing edge of the blade, you want leading edge biting the air, leading edge, trailing edge, trailing the air. The main reason for this is when you have your rotor on, your rotor wash, okay, is going to be here, and it is going to be pushing the air down through the tail. So when you're spinning counterclockwise here, this is pulling the rotor wash away. And now if you're inverted, it's a different story, but that's what you want to set it up for. Regular, you know, hovering is the way it's done. But, so now let's go over which direction is which. So this is the way I like to look at it. So if you want to go right rudder, Okay, the pitch slider is going to go left, but you want to go left rudder, the pitch slider is going to go right. The way I look at it is, is the slider direction is the direction the helicopter is going to go. So if you give it right input, it is going to push the tail to the left, which is going to push nose right, which is what you want, nose right, nose left. If you give it left input, the helicopter is going to push this way. So I hope that makes sense. That's the way I look at it all the time. You could also fold one blade over. And when you give it right rudder, your right blade should go, your blade should go outwards. When you give it left stick, your blade should go the same direction that the nose should go. So that's just the way that I do it. Okay, so now we are going to put the blade straight. Now this is the way I do it. We are running 69 millimeter blades. Same that I run on my helicopter. I get great tail performance this way. So we are going to want, let's fold the blades in, and we want the blades to be straight and centered, which they are. And I adjust my push rod. So if we can see here, when I go to put my push rod on, you're going to notice that it is off from the ball link a little bit. And I want a little bit of right pitch into my helicopter. So just a little bit. I put about three, about three degrees right there. That's about all the right pitch I put in it. And we want the bottom blade towards the boom, top blade away from the boom. And you only want a little bit. And this is just to help counter the torque. So you adjust your rod, 
Again, with Servo 90, adjust the rod so you have a little bit of right rudder pitch in it to help adjust with the torque. And then we are going to get into the servo or the beast deck setup and endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this rod. I need both hands to do this, but I'm going to adjust this rod just till we have, oh, about a few degrees. Just a little bit of right pitch is all we need. About three degrees, four degrees is what I set all my helicopters to when I get great tail performance. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the rod real quick, get that plugged in, get the camera set up on a tripod. And we will start with the beast deck. Right, so I just adjusted the rod real quick. You can see we have a few degrees here of right. And we can tell that our servo is 90. And we just need a few degrees of right rudder pitch. So I'm going to set the camera up now. And let's go over beast decks. Oh, another thing I want to go over real quick. Your direction of your belt is going to be the direction of your rotor spinning. So when you go to put the belt in the boom, I know I touched on this last video. You want the belt to be straight as it comes out the boom. And then you want to twist left. So you want to grab your belt and twist left. And you know you have it right. Again, if you spin your rotor head clockwise and your tail spins counterclockwise. If you spin your rotor the right way and the tail spins this way, then your belt is backwards. You need to take it back apart and retwist it. You want to go clockwise with the rotor head, counterclockwise with the tail blades. All right. So now we are going to adjust the micro beast for the endpoints on the tail so now if we put the tail here i went ahead and got this out of whack on purpose so if i go one way it's binding all the way over that's as much travel as i have binding all the way over as you can see here we want left stick is binding now again like i was saying if you put the blade down you go left it just goes left right so when we go left we bind when we go right we don't have enough travel all right so we are going to go into our micro beast here and we are going to push the little button right here and let's see if i could do this where you guys can see it all right so we're going to push this button until the a light is solid so hold it a is solid okay so we let go now we are going to go to e for endpoints so we're going to go one two three four now we are in e status light is off so now what we're going to do is we are going to Grab our tail rotor radio and you use the rudder stick on the radio itself. Now I'm using a DX7 just for setup purposes, but you use the rudder stick itself. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to move left until it bind until it almost binds and stop. And you will see this little light here will turn red to let you know that it is locked the position. So now again we are going to use our rudder stick and we are gonna go. Well, let me redo that. Now we're going to go right. Right before it stops, the light will blink purple. That means it has locked that position. And then now we are going to go left. To right before it binds, let off. The light will grab that position. So now you can do this in multiple different ways. Again, we're going to go all the way to the right, right before it stops, let it blink, it's locked in place. Again, go left, right till it right before it stops. You can see right here, it blinks, it has locked into place. So now, we are done with our setup for the tail. So now we're just going to click until we exit out. Now we are done with the tail. And now, we can see that we get no binding left or right and we know that we have left now we are holding left stick here so left and the top blade to the left right and the top blade to the right and now we know that we have that little bit of three degrees or so of uh, right pitch we are good we want so now our tail rotor setup is completed we have a nice smooth moving left and right no binding and you are ready to fly now remember blades are off 
so you don't hurt yourself. I usually always take the tail blades off as well, but for this purpose, I wanted to set the tail blades to where you guys could see what I was doing. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the main blades on, and then we are going to go over your pitch of the main blades. All right, so now we're gonna go over setting zero pitch at mid stick. So as you can see, we are at mid stick on the radio. We have our pitch gauge set up on the helicopter. We have the helicopter set. You always want to do the pitch with the blade to, uh, to the tail of the helicopter. So we have mid stick and we want zero degrees at mid stick. Now this is for two reasons. One, of course, zero degrees at mid stick. Number two, this is how we can tell if our blades are going to track straight or not without having to take off, track the blades with a piece of tape, land, adjust the linkage. You can do it with a pitch gauge. If both blades are identical at zero degrees or 0.1, you are good to go. So we're just going to go ahead and we have turnbuckles here. And we're just going to go ahead, grab the turnbuckle, and we're going to turn a little bit at a time. We're going to see what we're at. We're at 0.7. 0.4. So we need to go a little bit more. Doesn't take much. Church straight. 0.4. And then basically you're just going to do this until we're almost there. And then make sure your linkages are straight. Level the blade. Point two, you can see that good. Yep. So we're at point two, so we need just a tiny bit more. I'll just make sure our linkages are, or our ball links are straight. Point one. I'm happy with that. Now let's check the other blade and see where we're at. So we're gonna slide our pitch gauge off. Check this blade. We are positive, basically zeroed out. We are zero degrees on this blade. So let's go ahead and get this one to zero degrees because we can do it. We just got to do it. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to call that good. I'm happy with that. So now we're going to have to go positive and negative. So let's go positive pitch first. We are running eight degrees of positive pitch. And negative pitch, we have 9 degrees, 9.7. So you always want an even positive and negative. If you're a sport flyer, 10 degrees of pitch is more than adequate. I like to run around 14 degrees of pitch. Uh, but for this helicopter, for Ed, I'll probably set it around 12 and a half degrees of pitch. It should be all he should need. So now let's go ahead and go into the Micro Beast. And let's set your positive and negative pitch. All right, now that we have zero pitch set at mid stick, we are going to go ahead and we are going to teach the cyclic pitch geometry, which is you're going to want six degrees of cyclic pitch. So for that, we are going to, again, in the micro beast, hold the button down until we get a solid light. And then we are going to go to menu J. So F G H I J. All right, so now we're in menu J. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hold aileron stick to the right till we get 6 degrees, 6.5. We are good. So now we are done. We want at least 6 degrees, no more than 6.5, 7 degrees. I said it 6.5 is fine. So now we're going to go to menu K, which is going to be teaching the cyclic pitch range, meaning how much positive and negative pitch that you have. Hopefully that's better, you guys can see. Okay, so now we're gonna go positive. You can see we have 12.2 degrees. Now you're gonna use your rudder stick and we're gonna set this at 13 degrees. So we're at 13 degrees of positive pitch. It'll set, now we're gonna go to negative pitch. You can see we have 15.2 degrees of negative pitch. Way too much, so rudder stick left will give you less 
rudder stick right will give you more. So we're gonna go rudder stick left. We went a little bit too much. So let's go back till we get to 13 degrees on the dot. 13 degrees, let it sit. Now we have a positive and negative. So now we're gonna go to the cyclic swash plate limit, which is going to be menu L. So now we are on swash plate limit. So now we don't need the pitch gauge anymore. So we can go ahead, pull the pitch gauge off. We are done. So now we know that we have zero pitch at mid stick. We know that we have 13 degrees of positive and negative pitch. And we know that we have six degrees of cyclic pitch geometry. So now what's next? Let me readjust this camera for a second. Sorry. Okay, so now we are going to set the limit direction. So meaning how much our swash plate moves. So let's focus this camera in a little better. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna move our stick around and we wanna look for binding. So at negative pitch, we don't have any binding. At positive pitch, our elevator is binding. You can hear it. But everything, the only thing binding is elevator. So now what we're gonna do is at positive pitch, we are going to move, so we're gonna go full negative, move rudder stick left until we get this binding to quit. And we just want it to stop. So now we're good. Go negative pitch, move around, same with ailerons. So we're gonna go negative pitch with ailerons and move it. Make sure we don't get no binding. We are good. We are binding on elevator again. So move left, now our binding has stopped. Just enough, we are good there. Move your cyclic in all directions. We are good. So now we are basically done with that part of the setup. Now this is not a full setup on how to set your micro beast up at all. This is just what you should do anytime you redo the head. So now let's exit out. Now everything is saved and we are completely finished with the radio setup. Now, anytime you rebuild your head, you have to readjust linkages, anything like that, any crash where you put a new feathering shaft in. You should always go through your setup, make sure that your blades are zeroed at mid stick, make sure that you have a equal positive and negative pitch, whatever degrees you wanna run. If you're a normal sport flyer, 10 to 11 degrees of positive and negative pitch, more than you'll ever need. I like more, I'm gonna set this one at 13. I usually run around 14 and a half degrees. So this helicopter is completely set up now. We are done. We have our tail set like it should be. So now we don't have to worry about tail binding. We have the end point set again. We are good that way. We have our cyclic pitch geometry and binding and all that set so we have no binding no matter what we do we have an equal positive and negative pitch and we have zero pitch at mid stick now one last thing to do before we go fly is let's just make sure even though we haven't touched any of the servo or any of the programming let's just make sure that our swash plate direction our gyro direction is correct so when you pick up your helicopter and you tilt nose down tail up swash plate should go backwards nose up tail down Swash plate should go forward, backwards. When you tilt the helicopter to the left, swash plate should go to the right. When you tilt the helicopter to the right, swash plate should go to the left. Now we know our tail direction is set and same with tail direct, or our swash plate direction, sorry, is set. Now same thing with our tail. Now again, easiest way to do it is you can fold your blade in. Let's center the tail out here. So now if we push the helicopter tail to the right, nose left, we should get right pitch. And if we go left, we should get left pitch. So now, again, fold your blade, make sure all your directions are correct. Left, right, left, right. Let's grab the swash plate. Let's make sure all of our servo directions are correct. Forward flight, backwards flight, left, right. Positive pitch, negative pitch. Now we are completely set up helicopter is ready to go so now what we can do is charge this pack up and wait for some good weather and go fly it so i want to thank you guys so much for watching take care have a great day